Uh, hi, I'm uh, Baljo Dorji. Um, I was a former deputy minister in the government, and today I function as a special advisor to the National Environment Commission. Uh, but uh, most people know me as just Benji, or Tasha Benji. Uh, and uh, I have been involved one way or the other in uh, conservation and environment protection since the uh, 1960s in Bhutan. Uh, initially uh, in Darjeeling where I studied uh, in the Jesuit school, I was a member of the Darjeeling Naturalist Society. I think that played, uh, I did, I used to do quite well in that, in those uh, lectures and the tours that we used to have because I had an interest. And I think uh, some of, we had lectures from a lot of prominent uh, conservationists who would come and maybe a lot of what they talked must have stayed somewhere at the back of my head and it comes out. Otherwise I can't explain why I can put two, two, two and two together on many of the issues. So it must be from the talks that they've given me and it stayed, you know, dormant somewhere in the back of my head. Uh, so coming, coming back to Bhutan, I came back, I was influenced firstly by the first uh, no, well, not for, uh, yeah, by Anne Wright. I would say Anne Wright. Anne Wright was uh, with the WWF India in Calcutta and uh, a great lady whom I'm still in touch with and uh, she was one of the pioneers of uh, fighting against uh, trade in wildlife parts. You know, she would lead police to the new market where people were terrified of her and she was a wonderful, wonderful lady. She now today lives in Delhi. Uh, and then the second person was uh, Roger Holmes, who was a Maltese uh, and the first manager. He was with the Chartered Bank and he, be, he was uh, seconded to Bhutan as the first manager of the Bank of Bhutan. And he was a very uh, capable amateur ornithologist and lepidologist. And uh, as good drinking friends, we would talk all these environmental issues. We met. We would meet with uh, Dr. Salim Ali when Dr. Salim Ali made a couple of trips to Bhutan. We met and we would talk about uh, the uh, conservation issues here in Bhutan, what we knew about the birds, etc. And uh, and that was all in the late 60s, uh, in the early 70s. And then uh, after the uh, king passed away, the uh, great third king, Jigme Doji Wangchuk passed away. His son, uh, uh, whom uh, I then served, came to the throne and I was his, became a constant companion to the young king. And uh, yeah, uh, I was his court jester, make him laugh, keep him company, we played basketball together, played tennis, do whatever, all, all the little things. A constant companion and court jester, and uh, I served him for many years, uh, from seventy-four to eighty-seven as his chief justice. And in, in that period, I think that was the most very interesting period. At that time, we hunted a lot, fished a lot, and uh, we talked to all the hunters. We got a lot of knowledge from these uh, local knowledge from these people, and. Uh, they know more than any book can tell you, even about weather patterns or anything. And so everything that I relate to and write about and talk about is information I've gathered from these people and, uh, and inspired. And, my, uh, and in those early days, uh, while uh, I would do crazy things like tell the, kid, the young king, uh, so Your Majesty, uh, you know, we must uh, look at Jalapara Game Sanctuary, which we, I used to go as a, uh, in school when I was a member of the... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm uh, to, uh, rambling a bit here. But going back to that, it used to, the, the Jalapara Game Sanctuary was one of the most beautiful game sanctuaries in India, in the world. The amount of animals, elephants, rhinos, oh, it was so beautiful. And then I saw it destroyed after the Sino-Indian War, after the 1962. And by the time it was in the 70s, early 70s, I mean, it was decimated to a fraction of what it was, a pathetic uh, to its once grandeur. And I just mentioned to the young king, 
king. I said, sir, we must never let that happen here in Bhutan. And this young king, young, you know, he was still a teenager, could relate to what I was saying, what I was talking, because he knew that area. And, uh, and I said, sir, and we must protect our forests and we must save our trees. One day, I was a, I was a drunkard as well, an alcoholic, and you know, I said, one day the world will pay us not to cut our trees. Can you imagine that? This is in the early 70s. So, uh, so I would say, basically, firing from the hip, you know, get cowboy, red Indian fans, and fire from the hip and hit bullseye. So that's uh, me and then I was just lucky to be uh, where I was, what I was, everything is just your faith and karma to be there. Uh, what made me take up these issues? Well, uh, maybe it was my background from my school days. My father was definitely an influence. Uh, my father, I would say, was the Bhutan's first conservationist. He is the one who uh, started the Manas Game Sanctuary, declared Manas, had all the forests in southern Bhutan protected, uh, had forestry projects. He was, uh, I would say, he was really the uh, a great uh, visionary and, uh, the, and, and a good servant to his master, the king. And he would always give credit of everything he did to his king, his lord and master, the great third king. And me, and I do so as his son, I serve his, uh, the king, the third king's son, the uh, uh, Jigmi Singhi Wongchuk, and I give all, everything that I do because nothing, nothing, and nothing that I did and achieved would have been there unless he said, okay. You know, he's the one who backed me in everything. And, uh, and I, I have, uh, and as a good humble servant, I, uh, I would give credit to him. He was, he was, an, he's, he is an extraordinary man. Uh, I wish more people, more world leaders would get to know him, learn from him, how to be a leader, how to be humble, and how to hold the reins of power and release it when it's necessary. No, uh, no, uh, I know of no leader in this world as great as this uh, great fourth king of ours. And, and, uh, and I should know, because I've met with him, been with him very closely associated, met with prime ministers and kings and queens and presidents and you name it, I mean. Uh, so so uh, it was uh, in this aspect, in my drunken days, I would make various predictions about what would happen because of certainly projects which would be coming up over here, wood-based projects and the damage that they would do and what would eventually be the cost that we would have to pay. And uh, <laughs> it would take hours if I talked about what I want to do, what we are doing. But uh, 